Hi, in this particular video uh, we're not being asked to simplify or write as a single fraction, we're actually going to be asked with this algebraic uh, um, equation to solve it, in other words to find the value of x. Now that seems on the surface to be relatively straightforward if you've had a look at some of the other parts of the playlist, but it does make life a little bit more difficult, particularly when it comes to the final bit. Um, on this particular type of video you need to be really looking at around about level 7 plus in GCSE because it does get a bit tricky and we're going to use something called completing the square or quadratic formula at the end and you'll see what I mean as we move on a little bit further on. Okay so in this particular case I'm going to make sure that the bottom has the same denominator which is going to be the two um, uh, expressions multiplied together. Okay, so the first thing is, is that I look at this one here and say I need to multiply that by x minus 3 in order to get this denominator. So I need to multiply the numerator by x minus 3. Okay, the second one I need to multiply that by x plus 2. So again, I multiply the numerator by x plus 2. Okay, hopefully that's all right for you so far because that's really in keeping with some of the other previous videos in the, uh, in the playlist. I'm going to now multiply out the brackets and make that x minus 3 plus 2x plus 4 divided by x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 3 and that equals 1. Hopefully again that's okay with you. All I've done is I've multiplied out these terms by the term outside and then I'm going to gather up those terms and I'm going to end up with um, 3x and I've got minus 3 plus 4 well that's going to be plus 1 divided by x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 3 and that little lot is going to be equal to 1. Okay, now this is where it just gets a little bit trickier because what I need to do is I need to um, solve for x. So if you can imagine that 1 is the same as saying 1 over 1 and what effectively I'm doing is I'm cross multiplying. Okay, so I could write this particular term as 3x plus 1 equals x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 3 if I wanted to and that makes my life a little bit easier because now I can just multiply out these brackets and what I'm going to end up with at the end of this is a quadratic equation because x times x is x squared and you'll recognize that as a quadratic and then I'm going to end up with minus 3x plus 2x is minus x and then minus 6. Now, if I make this equal to zero, what I can do is solve it then as if it was a quadratic equation. So in order to make it equal to zero, I'm going to take these terms over to here. So I've got minus x minus 3x. Remember when you change sides, you minus it. So that's becoming minus 4x. And I've got minus 6 minus 1 is going to be minus 7. So if I look at that, now this is where I think it is a little bit trickier because you need to recognize that there isn't a way of solving this by trial and error. And that's where I think um, higher level students will get this relatively straight away. But uh, you might need a little bit of practice with just recognising these types of equations that make it a little bit more difficult for you. So um, you've got two options. You can either use completing the square, which is the one that we're going to do, or you could use quadratic formula. Because really what we're trying to do is find the value of x. Now completing the square is just a little bit more straight straightforward with these type of fairly low number ones because what I can do is I can look at these two terms here and I'm going to write those as x minus 2 squared. Now if you're not sure about what I've done there please do have a look at some of the playlists on completing the square but basically if I now take that and I write it to one side I end up with x minus 2 multiplied by x minus 2. So that's going to give me x squared minus 4x plus 4. So actually all I've done is I've written the same terms together 
in a slightly different format, but then I've got to get rid of this plus four. So in order to get rid of that plus four, I'm going to minus four. Then I'm going to minus the seven, and that equals zero. Okay, so hopefully you're following this all right. I'm just going to move this up ever so slightly. Okay, so now I'm just going to make that a little bit tidier as x minus 2 squared minus 11 equals 0. Now this will give me the ability then to find the value of x. And again, if you're not sure, please do have a look on completing the square. So I'm going to take that 11 and move it over to here and I'm going to get x minus 2 squared equals 11. Now if I want to now uh, find x on its own, one of the easiest ways is to square root both sides because then I can get rid of this here. So if I square root the left hand side I get x minus 2. If I square root the right hand side I get the root of 11. Now remember that's a plus or a minus because square roots can be plus or minus. Then it's a case of taking over this value of minus 2 and moving it over here. So actually I can write x as equal to 2 plus the root of 11 or x is equal to 2 minus the root of 11 and that's actually my answer. Now you will get um, a, a decimal equivalent of that if you use the quadratic formula but in this particular case it's much more accurate to put it into the third form. Now I do appreciate that's quite a long and very detailed explanation of this type of solving. I'm going to post some more videos on this type of work. Um, hopefully you found it useful please do add a comment below if you're not sure. Have a look at some of the other videos, particularly the videos on completing the square and solving quadratic equations. And I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.